It's the Weekly Wrap with your host, broadcasting legend Bruce Wolf, and his trusty sidekick, comedian Tim Slagle. And now, without further ado, Bruce Wolf. Bruce Wolf, Tim Slagle on the Weekly Wrap. And now, my favorite part of the show, wherein I guess what's in Tim's background today. And this is a slam dunk, Tim. I, it's obviously, we've, you got a picture of Joe Biden's uncle who was eat. <coughs> excuse me. I just coughed up a little bit of Joe Biden's uncle. <clears throat> Joe Biden's uncle who was eaten by a cannibal. Am I right? Well, uh, that would only be the case if he came with Cheddar Bay biscuits. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> well, yeah. Oh, yes. Let's um, let's uh, say cottage for, uh, well, actually, you can't for Red Lobster. It's not kosher. But, um, yeah, Red Lobster and Oberweiss Dairy, which we'll get to. I, I, I got to take some of the blame i you know i passed by a lot of red lobsters uh in in recent years but have not stopped there have you eaten at a red lobster uh not not not, not recently i usually uh i usually avoid the chains but i have a friend in the restaurant business and he tells me that red lobster has the best fish and the best lobster it's because they're because they're such a bulk buyer uh -huh. that they they when they get to the docks they get to they get to see, they get to be at the front so they get the first pick of everything that comes in so see and I would think that oh boy it's I mean because you always think of lobsters you know a fine delicacy uh you know you should only pay market price seventy nine dollars uh, you know for sure. two tails um but it, maybe they're it's just as good there but. I, you know, they had an Oberweiss was fine ice cream too. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, I think it was too fine ice cream. I think that whole, I mean, it was a, for the first, uh, it, when, when I first, they first came out with those glass bottles that were returnable, like the old milkman days. Oh, right, right. I couldn't resist them. I always had one in the fridge. I've been a sucker for retro. <laughs> and, uh, and, and one day I priced it. <laughs> oh, that's ridiculous. That, that was the last Oberlis well, bottle was, in my refrigerator. Yeah, somebody was writing that it was like twelve dollars a gallon for gasoline. I mean, you know, I, I mean for, for their milk, gasoline, same thing. But yeah, it, it was way too expensive, uh, Oberweiss. And it, what's interesting is because I have heard that Oberweiss himself is a, a, a cheapskate. <laughs> so uh, well, charging maybe. the high prices. And now I'm wondering, you know. If, if he doesn't have this going for him anymore, will we ever see another Oberweiss candidacy? Uh, what was the last one? It's been at least 10 years, hasn't it? I, it's been a number of years, but I'll, I'll never forget seeing him. He was go, going for the U.S. Senate and he's on, I think it was a Channel 11 or 7 debate. Durbin is on with him. And I, I, this debate was unbelievable because. Durbin, it, it was before uh, the Supreme Court had ruled on uh, same sex marriage. Because Durbin actually said that he wanted to leave it to the states. And I said, no, Dick, you got that's the wrong answer for a liberal. It's <laughs> no, no, because you can't Dick, you can't say that same sex marriage is the civil rights issue of our time, which he had said and leave it to the states because that yeah. means no, it doesn't. But it didn't matter because he was up against Oberweiss and Oberweiss. I can't remember what the situation was, but Kathy Brock who is, you know, was a news anchor at Channel 7. And, you know, I have a, a bias against news anchors. Uh, every you know, every single one of them. Having you been hate, one of them, them and just being envious of the fact that they have the jobs and I don't. But she made his head spin around. He didn't know. And, and it wasn't like it wasn't scripted. Uh, you know, like I once saw majors you know, and, and the first question in a debate, but he had obviously prepared it. Not that he wasn't a smart guy, but this was ad libbed. And she just as she was good. She was great on her feet, Kathy Brock. And, uh, you know, so I, I miss you, Kathy Brock. Uh, and and just, and I, I want to be able to I'll go on record as saying that because, you know, a lot of the things I say would seem to be misogynistic and in fact probably are. But I had to admit that Kathy <laughs> Brock was very, very good. So, yeah, I right, cannot well, I cannot hear the Oberweiss name without hearing sound of music in my head. Oh, sure. Exactly. And maybe if he had, they had, had a jingle, uh, an ad for that. I can't believe they, yeah, I can't believe, I can't believe they never looked into it. I mean, it's so, Why it's so not? perfect. Pure and white. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> no. oh yeah. <laughs> Blossom of snow cones <laughs> to bloom and grow. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. And because it, it, Sound of Music, automatic tearjerker, right? You, uh -huh. you're gonna... Did you ever, did you ever though, see uh, uh, um, uh, The Man in the High Castle? Did you watch that you one? You have asked me about that, and I did. What's it's like if Hitler actually won, right? Yeah, yeah. The the Nazis get the the, the atom bomb first, and so and they win. and just don't tell me that Julie Andrews is in it, and she's no. Frau Julie in this one. No, the the the, the theme song, <laughs> the theme song, is uh, is Edelweiss being sung by a Dutch girl, so it's got a very heavy heavy uh. a accent she's doing it like in a real whisper voice and when you see it and then the meanwhile you're seeing the united states uh, the the statue of liberty being torn down and so the capital the capital in flames and stuff like that and you realize when you hear the song it could have been the austrian anthem but it also could have been <laughs> <laughs> pure and white oh sure oh, <laughs> you know? oh, don't get me Bless going on that all right we got to land forever we we got to get to the topic that was uh, assigned here because i know that chris wants to use his big graphic bruce's yeah, news sounds... news okay <laughs> so i'm watching the Masters Golf Tournament over the weekend. I mean, I think I watched it for hours on end, and it's obligatory. And then all of a sudden, there's a CBS special report in the middle of it. And this CBS News anchorette, Asian woman, absolute drop dead. What can I say? Gorgeous. She does the report that Iran has bombed Israel. Uh, and and I, I, I swear, I could have watched this woman for at least three or four more seconds before I would have been really upset that they weren't going back to Ama and Corner at Augusta <laughs> National. But that's, and I was kind of hoping, a little fantasy here, that her perf Asian, beautiful, her preferred pronoun is me. And that's a full metal jacket reference if you catch my drift. Okay. Anyway, so it's, that's not her, is it? <laughs> is it who you know now i'm now i'm it, I, I can't win because it's, because i'm gonna say that they all look alike to me and that's not true but she's a cbs news correspondent that you just showed that this was an anchor and i don't think it was the same person i mean you can have more than one asian you can have more i, than, I can't i don't think i can pronounce her name without hearing full metal jacket in my head either you right and that's because if, you're if that was nasty. her yeah you're nasty so, all right. You anyway, up. as far as the actual substance of, of, of what happened there, I mean, I don't think people knew what to expect. I think, you know, now on oh, the aftermath, oh, sure. Yeah, we took it all out and everything. And well, like one girl was critically injured or something after all these rockets were fired. Um, Yeah. Your reaction to all this, Tim. Well, I'm, I'm going I'm going with the conspiracy. That, of course. Uh, that, that, that Blinken talked with Iran and said, and they said, we know you got to do something. Here's, here's what, here's what, here's the way we do it. We want to test out some of our stuff against that Russian stuff. <laughs> so just, uh, just, just, uh, uh, put up some missiles, leave the lights on so we can make sure to see them. And, uh, uh, which, which I understand they were, they left the lights so you could see that they were well lit and, uh, <laughs> U.S. and U.K. forces, they just played video games for, for a couple there hours. Go. There you go. And I, your, that makes Iran, perfect sense to Iran me. Iran saved face, and Israel didn't. They, they they gave Israel no reason in their minds to, to, to retaliate. And I got to see five seconds of a beautiful CBS News anchorette. So, like Joe Biden, I'm going to take the win. Now, here's the thing with Joe Biden. You don't, you don't really know for sure if that's what he said, take the win, Israel, because just the other day he said, that uh, Israel shouldn't go into Haifa, and he meant Rafa. You know, there's a big difference, one being in Israel and one being in Gaza. Um, so, who, Well, he, he couldn't even pronounce his hometown the other day, if you saw that. Oh, really? What did he What did he say? Scrax, 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 scrax. Oh, yeah. you, well, you, you know one. the place. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. Um, so did you see the, um, the Teamsters actually were helping um, – the protesters, you know, uh, with their uh, hate, hate uh, Israel, hate America chanting. There's like in some Teamsters headquarters where they were doing it. This is I, don't they have anything better to do, like try to find Jimmy Hoffa? I, I just <laughs> I, I I don't get that. Um, 
It's uh, it, it, it's I'm sure it wasn't the it wasn't the Teamsters. It was Teamsters leadership. I mean, there's such a disconnect now between oh, oh, well, between of course, of course, oh, sure. union leadership and the membership. How the membership really yeah. votes. So yeah. no, I, I I understand that. Um, but uh, you know, in in all uh, semi seriousness, oh, we got to take a look at o O'Hare being blocked by these protesters. And you know, my first question, probably yours, is, aren't the Aren't the cops equipped with billy clubs anymore? I mean, what? <laughs> I hope they're going to bring them out for the convention. You know, yeah, little, little 1968 flashback. 68. So this happens at O'Hare, and how long? I know in San Francisco it took hours. How long did it take the police to get to O'Hare? Do you, do you know? I mean, people were getting out of their cars and and walking. I, I know that. It's uh, yeah. My guess is, my guess is, they just said, "Hey, you guys voted for this." <laughs> well, sure. Well, it's here's just... what I'm wondering is, you know, they have that shot spotter thing that can detect bullets and they renewed that. I mean, can can shot spotter pick up the sound of people ululating? I'm I'm just wondering. Uh <laughs> so I, I I don't really know. It was only a couple of boy, I would have been so mad. Because I'm never, oh. I'm I'm never, I'm never I never give myself enough time when I'm making a flight. Always like building that. now, be the typical dad. You know, it's got to get to O'Hare like three hours ahead of time <laughs> for a domestic flight. Now it's going to be like four and a half. We <laughs> might run into protesters. And, you know, by the way, what's the complaining for once people get out of their cars and, and a little good exercise? So you walk a half a mile. <laughs> I mean, really, you know, as soon as you get in there, you're going to go to McDonald's or the food court or whatever and reward yourself. So no, I'm always about? jogging through the airport with all my luggage. Yeah, yeah. Maybe OJ helping you out to get the <laughs> rental card. Bruce Wolf, Tim Slagle on the weekly wrap. We want to thank you for joining us tonight. We have to say this is our last show of our limited series. I know, didn't you think time fly by? We've been on like six months. Didn't it fly by for you? It flew by, but it's, Gail, I'm a, I, I tell what? people, you're the best. I say that about uh, you, too. You're so awesome. I say that about you, And we too. got so many amazing people who work on the show yeah. behind the scenes. Yes, yes, yes. I just want to thank everybody. You know, uh, I don't want to say the names because I might forget somebody. But... Bruce Will, Tim Slagle on the weekly wrap. Of course, it's uh, D. Rigor here that. We get a little schadenfreude anytime anybody's canceled by CNN, uh, <laughs> be it Don Lemon or really hoping for Jake Tapper one of these days. But um, yeah, Tubin's back. Oh, well, and of course. Strange. I mean, boy, did he take it? Megan Kelly. I saw a oh. tweet from Megan Kelly. Did you see the Megan <laughs> Kelly tweet? Yeah, yeah, I did. I mean, it was like, oh, come on, honey. I mean, yeah. you can't say that. I don't think we can even say it. I no. Can we say this stuff, Chris? She's using, you know, every dirty word you can imagine for she said teenage. yeah she said you pulled out uh, uh as, as chris Platt said this morning yeah. you pulled out jerry you pulled out your short for richard and yeah. uh yeah and uh jamaican chicken did in front of everybody <laughs> right i mean uh now you're getting me hungry but the thing is, is you know so she she says that, i mean she she really got crazy and it, it, the whole thing was over uh the hypocrisy of having Tubin on there lecturing about what was he lecturing? He said, he said, he said, I th was he talking about Trump? He said he was a disgrace. I think. Oh, it's something. Yeah. Tr he used the word. He, I don't whatever. know who he was talking about, but he used the word disgrace. And Megan right, like went, Tubin is really <laughs> like he is like he isn't a disgrace. And, and, you know, he still has a job. But I, but that was really something. But anyway, so Charles Barkley loses his show. And thank God, uh, way too much success for this guy. Uh, and, uh, you know, but he ventured and, you know, Gail King, I mean, she's I mean, she's lucky that she you know, survived Oprah and uh, and got to do the CBS morning show, which I believe is not dependent on ratings. If I'm not, do you think, do you think Gail King would have gotten that show if she wasn't uh, uh, Oprah's best friend? Oh, that's how she got the CBS morning show. Yeah, exactly. Right. That, that, exactly. That's how she got that. But I mean, um, yeah, they. Uh, I mean, it, she, it, is, it, she she wasn't Stedman. She was the instead. Yeah. Uh, right. Here, here's the problem. With, here's the problem with Barkley. I mean, Barkley, it's funny to hear Barkley say crazy things on an NBA broadcast because you're not. Look, I know because I was a funny sp sportscaster. It's like belching in church or mm -hmm. that's like 
Megan Kelly swearing on Twitter. It's just, you know, but 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 this is when you've got your own show, it I'd say that's tantamount to like you doing stand up comedy and people feel like they're paying at least nine fifty a, a drink and they want something and they weren't they couldn't get it from Charles Barkley in you know the a regular talk show setting. That that doesn't work. It's like Magic Johnson. Do you remember Magic Johnson had his own talk show once? Uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was like when they, they everyone had a late night show, Pat Sajak he, he and it, Joan and it Rivers was, and, and, and yeah, it was absolutely horrible. Arsenio Hall. Yeah. But I mean, he, it was horrible. And we had Magic Johnson on TV. He was promoting something on channel 32. And I did this bit with him, uh, where I did, uh, create your own sports cast. I went out on the street with uh, like this cardboard thing that was rectangular looked like a TV set with nothing in it and just my face in it and stopped people in the middle of the street. Like I was on TV and, and I asked them what highlights they wanted to show, see. And then we superimposed the highlights. It was like wh whatever they wanted on the street. Uh -huh. And then um, I said, said to a person who came on the street, would you like to meet magic Johnson? And they said, sure. And then magic comes and stands next to me. We had him as part of the bit. But he sticks his hand through the cardboard thing to shake hands with the person. I said, what are you doing, man? It's the fourth wall. You can't <laughs> poke through it. No wonder your TV show didn't succeed. And he just laughed the whole thing off. Whereas kept, he could have uh, flattened kept knocking, me. <laughs> kept, kept knocking over cameraman trying that stunt. <laughs> right. No, he was. But he was he was a nice guy. And, um, well, and, if, he and anyway. along, if he played along with that stunt, yeah, he'd have to be. Uh, pff, tell me about it. <laughs> Tell me about it. Anyway, all right, let's go to something really serious here. So the polls are tightening. Uh, the oh, Sheila E is on, man, how did he not succeed with Sheila E on his show? So um, the polls are tightening. Biden is like ahead in some of them nationally, not in each state. Are, are you worried? Uh, a little. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I always go. I always go by the betting pools. OK, I mean, that's always I think when people actually have money on a poll, that tends to be more accurate than when just somebody answers a, a an anonymous phone call. Right. And uh, and Biden's actually ahead in the betting pools right now. He's so ahead in the uh, betting pools. Now, yeah. Um, it's, it's only one percent, but still. Yeah. Right. So um, and somebody was writing that this was going to come down to like two states. I think Nevada and Michigan, maybe maybe Arizona, but then you could see. Well, that's the why. big that's the big joke in Israel. You knew that, right? Is is Biden Biden's looking for a two state solution? Exactly, Michigan yes, and Minnesota. <laughs> I have heard that one. And but but your delivery is much better on it than uh, than Shecky Greens in, in Israel. <laughs> but uh, but so so no wonder he's worried about those four hundred thousand Muslims in Michigan. There's 275,000 Jews in Michigan, 400,000 Muslims. Uh, but yeah, that's why he's saying to Israel, uh, just take the wind, don't go into Rafa. Um, and yeah. Um, yeah, and now, so, so, but, but I've, I've heard some analysis saying the reason that he, it, 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 it's, it's uh, Democrats coming home to the party, they got nowhere else to go. And the economy might feel better to some people. It's not about the Middle East, but why do you think it's tightening up? Well, I think it's yeah. I think it's uh, well. I think it is. The Middle East does have it does have a a, a, a part of it. Also, you've got uh, you've got the uh, the uh, student loan giveaway. I okay. mean, a lot of a lot of young people are are so in favor of that, and you tell them, well, you know, the Supreme Court said he couldn't. I don't care. I don't want to have to pay anymore. <laughs> Yeah, but it's ruining the Constitution. I don't care. Do you know how much I owe? <laughs> so exactly. Exactly. It's, it's, uh, that's that's uh, that's how many how many that's people young did... people courtesy the public schools of America right yeah, there. How many how many people did that affect that student loan uh, program? How many? Uh, I don't know. It's uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, is it enough to really factor in? I I understand that's it's, what it's, the it's like half a about. trillion, isn't it? It's like a half a trillion dollar giveaway is what. Is right. What, but I, yeah. OK, well, that's a lot of people could be a lot of people. Yeah, that would be um, a lot of people. And then also number three, I, I think, is uh, is Arizona Supreme Court decision on abortion. Yeah. Yeah. Would, which put even, Arizona back in play. Right. But even like Carrie Lake is like backpedaling on that, and, as everybody is, because I mean, yeah, you can't you can't you can't. Nobody's saying you got to live with the 
uh, Arizona uh, uh, Supreme Court of 1864 decision or whatever yeah. that was. And I would think I would think, though, that Arizona, I, I you wouldn't you wouldn't have a lot of young vote there. It seems right. to me it seems to me that uh, that uh, uh, the 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 Arizona, the Arizona vote is going to go towards uh, uh, postmenopausal women who uh, <laughs> are, are d- disappointed they still don't have any grandchildren. Ooh, yeah. I'll, t- I'll tell you about that. Yeah, I think you're right about that. Um, so then, you know, this, then you got to think, okay, so we got suckered in. It's possible we got suckered in. And a guy like DeSantis got, su- because, oh, well, we can't, you know, it's Trump's party. And then he's going to, it's, he very well could lose. Well, I, I, I can't see it. I think it's just, I think it's a temporary blip. I oh. think it'll Oh well now now I feel better. And, and I don't know and why hopefully, I'm listening. and hopefully yeah, I don't know why you're I don't know why I'm either. depending my hopes to pin foil Tim foil hat guy <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> who tells warmed over jokes from Israel about the two state solution. <laughs> I don't well okay. Yeah, I just no, I think uh, I, I I think as it goes on, I think I think what's 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 good is with him ahead of the polls, uh, running up to the running up to the convention. It's the closer we get, the more likely the Democrats are say, "Oh, we don't have to replace him; he'll do just fine." Don't we'll, we'll worry about it <laughs> after the election. That's right. That's right, you guys. <laughs> well, so, all right. So I'm uh, I am not concerned. Uh, um, at, at, not at this. Not okay. At this point. So did you um, see? Did you see he's not going to be on Ohio and Alabama ballot? Did you see that? I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Oh, in our Biden talk. is not going to be on it. Yeah, yeah. The deadline for Ohio is uh, uh, August seventh. The deadline for Alabama is August fifteenth, and their convention is no, not be... until August thirty first. Oh, I, that's unprecedented. Anyway, I mean, the, the um, big concern, of course, is you know, guys like guys like our, with if this close, the third party candidates and uh, who who knows how that's all going to shake out. It was interesting this week. Trump got criticized for falling asleep uh, at his trial. Uh, look, I, do p- people think do people think trials are like on TV where they let you have like a, a five second <laughs> summation? You know yeah. how boring trials are. I was oh, a four huh. person or four man or what, whatever uh, at a federal trial about seventeen years ago, and I had a hard time keeping my I, uh, eyes open during now admittedly i was up at 4 30 in the earlier for for a job and then i had to go to court after that but it was but you know i'm i'm asking in the in the jury room afterwards so what happened here uh, let's not rush to judgment uh, <laughs> yeah let's not be 12 angry men because i was one sleepy man uh let's get this right i can't no, I, I can't mean, i can't imagine that uh the, the judge is making him sit there it's like it's like it's like my god he's treating him like a kid in detention I hope he gets time served uh, for uh, <laughs> for the trial itself. Well, they've already dumped two jurors. They they picked seven, and they've already dumped two. Well, aren't they? Uh, didn't they get the, the? Wait, no, I think they already have the full jury pool. They and did, but they, they but, the they, but they had to. They no, they had to dump two. It's they they found they found that two of them the two of them lied to get there. Okay, well, I'm, all right, we may be. So they're back down to five. Oh, are they? Oh, okay. Uh, as of this writing. Uh, but you know, what's great is Trump then got to go to this bodega and he actually looked pretty good there. Uh, you know, he's, he's a man of the people and he could do all of his campaigning over the next several weeks because he has, has the excuse that he's got to be in New York and New York, you know, is, I mean, everybody thinks of Manhattan and Broadway and everything, but it's New York's got enough there that's representative of the whole country. And he wouldn't have to go anywhere. You know, it'd be like when the moon landing was done in a studio, which we all know happened. Uh, <laughs> even even tinfoil Tim doesn't buy that one. Right, right. <laughs> Bruce Wolf, Tim Slagle on the <laughs> weekly wrap. Our reverence for the truth might be a distraction that's getting in the way of finding common ground and getting things done. Now, that is not to say that the truth doesn't exist, nor is it to say that the truth isn't important. Clearly, the search for the truth has led us to do great things, to learn great things. Bruce Wolf, Tim Slagle on the weekly wrap. You know, this is like a dream of mine. I mean, (laughs) I it's like they just 
gave it to you on a silver platter. And and then this guy, Yuri Berliner, who was, worked for NPR for 25 years. Is it Berliner? Is that how it's pronounced? Or, well, I tweeted Ich bin ein Berliner. Uh, yeah, that's, to, that's, to be, that's to what be I was in solidarity it's, with him, which means uh, I am a jelly donut, of course. Right. But, um, yeah, so wh- however it's pronounced, uh, the whole idea that they don't even care about the truth. <laughs> I mean, they're not even, they're not even lying no, anymore. No, she said, she said, trying to find the truth is not as important as, uh, as making a difference or something to that. You effect. know, I, I agree <laughs> actually on some level. First off, if you tell people, we're not going to tell you the truth. I got no problem with you. Uh, you're not, you're not a fraud. Then you're, you're saying, right. It's, it's like my Twitter handle. Uh, you know, I say, uh, Chicago TV radio legend. Uh, and then I can be bought. I say, you know, a smile will do it. And if, you know, guys like Rob feeder who used to write a media column had said, you scratch my back, you know, with a little disclaimer, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Sure. Uh, I play favorites. I'll be fine. I understand that. So at least their NPR is coming out of the closet with that. Well, and, didn't they get it? Didn't NPR get? Didn't they get quite upset just recently because someone referred to them as state? Because I think it was Elon Musk referred to them as state media, right. state-run media. They go, "No, we're not. We're <laughs> we're we're journalists." Yeah. Oh my God, <laughs> they really are. So so anyway, I um, I actually tweeted at one point. Then you know, I thought this woman actually looked, pre- at least in the shot that I, I saw, she looked you know pretty decent. Mm-hmm. Uh, and especially because I hadn't actually listened to what she said. So I was just looking, looking at her. And so you're um, looking at the TED talk or did that picture of her with her mask on? Because uh, I, I think it's a TED talk and okay. um, and the lighting is good and everything. But then I got some this guy, Bunker 540 tweeted back to me. Yeah, but in the morning, she'd open her mouth and start telling you about everything you did wrong that her ex did right. Then on to her daddy <laughs> issues. Next thing you know, you're trying to claw your way out the, uh, the bathroom window and get to your car. So, yeah, I get that. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, that's the shot of her. I mean, you know, she looks- what do you think her what do you think her DEI is uh, uh, it, it points come from? Do you think well, first, I uh, mean, she's think, she was born she, in the land. She of goes both ways. Uh, no, I, she's got n- none. I mean, you know, it's it's like the old story. Well, I mean, t- she might she might she might be, you know, she might be uh, uh, well, take on a couple letters of the alphabet, uh, uh, a B or a Q, maybe. Or she could be one, you know, you know, I'm one uh, 32nd Chicago Blackhawk. Uh, you know, <laughs> so we, we all have our roots somewhere. Um, but yeah, she kind of looks she kind of looks like she could do a little Rachel DeLazzo, though, with a with a little bit more time oh. in the tanning booth and, okay. uh, and and braiding that hair. I don't she think she have... has to do that because she's doing you know, it's it's like Teddy Kennedy. Um, you know, once he drives a mirror, he wasn't the, none of the Kennedys were doctrinaire liberals i mean jfk came out for, you know with tax cuts and worried about the missile gap uh then sure. he'd have teddy, to run third party these days as well yeah and then teddy wasn't uh, you know a doctrinaire liberal until he killed mary joe kopechny and then he had to do the make good and uh when i returned the car and mary joe were gone so and then he became the liberal you know the darling of the liberals as a make good for the rest of his life and i, I totally get that um, I'm wondering if we can now count on NPR, uh, you know, since it did give an in-kind contribution <laughs> to the uh, Biden campaign uh, there, which Biden didn't report. Uh, shouldn't shouldn't that be the subject of a federal prosecution pronto uh, by maybe that New York uh, district attorney? You know, while he could piggyback it on to the uh, to the Trump uh, crazy trial. There's got to be a way that you could. You could uh, look Can look at that Biden Can... is accepting a contribution there from NPR. I mean, my sure. favorite thing uh, among the many you know crimes and misdemeanors that they've committed over the last several years is this Berliner writes that they didn't want to do the laptop story because they thought it could help Trump. That's the criteria. Yeah. Admittedly, for not doing it, 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 it. admittedly that they, 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 they were worried that it would help Trump. So, yeah. I mean, that's that's uh, yeah, right there. <laughs> <laughs> but I love it's it's a great you know it reminds me a little bit 
you know, in the fifties, everyone denied that they were communists. You know, oh, Alger Hiss, I'm not a communist, even though I, you know, he was. Uh, that was the big thing, the denial. Then all of a sudden, you see, like in the seventies, Woody Allen does a movie called The Front, and the the whole tone shifts. It's like, okay, guy was a communist, big deal. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, we're no better than they are. <laughs> well, wait a minute. That's not what you're saying in the 50s. And now not that there's anything wrong with that. Yeah. And now <laughs> saying we don't. Well, right. We've got we've got uh, issues that we want to promote. Uh, it's look, look, it's even gotten to the point where Stephen Colbert is who's never taken his show on the road is going to be at the Democratic Convention in Chicago. That's the first time he's taken a show on the road. And. I mean, this isn't like in the old days when Johnny would do a week in Vegas or something. You know, this yeah, is Colbert. He just wants to go to Second City and be and be worshipped. That's uh, there that's, we uh, go. That's my that's my speculation. Why yeah. he wants to sh come to Chicago. Yeah, there we go. But I just, uh... you know, it's kind of like I was told that why 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 professors so like like a lot of professors never leave the college campus because there's there's uh, because of freshman girls. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I don't. I wish they all could be Frenchman girls. Uh, yeah, so no, it's kind of I, the same thing. So Colbert's probably gonna gonna come to Second City to check out some uh, some training center girls. Hey, speaking of school children, man, did I shed a tear when I read the Sun Times story that? And I love when the woke go against the woke. I mean, it's great. That's the Sun Times. So apparently, this year's Pride Parade is denying all the previous year's school participants, the Chicago police have like some kind of safety regulation that they put in. And I would say there's a butterable presumption that it's just racist or anti LGBT. Yeah. We safety. Come on. Uh, and, uh, you know, they never, they never curtailed the parade at all when uh, the Catholic church wanted to have mass on, uh, on Sundays. Uh, and, and they ran the parade right in front of that. I remember Cardinal Bernardine, Actually, not Bernadine, uh, Cardinal George, actually complaining to me on the radio about that. <laughs> here, about, here, about, I said. The about Cardinal the pride George. parade coming from in front of his house? Yeah, right. And he was trying to, can't they just be, you know, you know, give us a little so the, room here? So I, I, the way I read the article, they don't, they don't want school children marching in the parade. Is that right? Is well, they that... don't want it. They say it's a safety reason. So they made the parade smaller uh, and size matters. Uh, uh, for a lot of reasons, and I, th I think you might be missing something. It, 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 it's uh, uh, that they that they don't want they don't want kids <laughs> to actually see swinging the, uh, to, to see stuffers. yeah to see to see guys to see guys and chaps with no pants under. Oh, I, I can't believe that they still have that in there. <laughs> uh, but I don't know. You know, are you telling me that Channel Seven is not going to run this live? I would hope so. Um, <laughs> anyway, five of the six schools. They can pixelate. They can pixelate the cheeks. Yeah, listen to the schools that participated last year that were denied entry. The schools include the Francis W. Parker School, mm -hmm. Catherine Cook School, Near North Montessori School, Rogers Park Montessori School, and Lycée Accent Aigu over the E, Francais with Cédille on Francais, Lycée Francais uh, de Chicago. Um, those sound, you know, Sound pretty much like inner city schools, uh, Marshall <laughs> High School, Austin, <laughs> Steinmetz. <laughs> yeah. So these, so it's the poor little rich kids who aren't going to get to go to the the uh, same sex. Uh, the LGBT aren't going to get to march. Friend. Aren't going to get to march. And, and I I think the reason is they don't want they don't want uh uh to give the right that opportunity to say oh look at this parade parade with all these children. There with drag queens. I mean, no, see, children, I, children with children in the presence of drag queens see, is I like mean, is fodder I mean, well, for right wing media. Well, but I look. I mean, let's do the Occam's Razor approach here. I mean, supposedly the Chicago police. There's a there's a the, the parade's just too big and unwieldy. And by unwieldy, I mean it's swinging around those. You know, <laughs> <laughs> may hit a church door and knock it over. You know, uh, I just is. I, I, so you're you're looking at a more sinister motive, I think. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I don't. I, I've often been told that the pride parade is no place for kids, and, and that any 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 parents that bring their kids to there are being irresponsible. I've heard that in the past. So why would you want kids marching in it? 
It's I've never been to a pride parade, so so I'm speaking from ignorance. I remember ignorance. the first pride parade. I was working at the Learner newspapers, and the uh, we had the Lincoln Belmont Booster was the paper, and the guy Pat Butler was the editor. He thought it was the biggest riot in the world. Ran this gigantic photo of a Statue of Liberty guy in drag. I mean, it 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 was. It was like sensational at the time and for a community mm -hmm. newspaper. Mm -hmm. And and, you know, everybody thought it was just absolutely, absolutely outrageous. But now now, every you know, it's corporate. It's the White Sox are sponsoring this parade. Uh, you know, they like <laughs> they, they, they like all the participants to, you know, come to a White Sox game. It's um, Rush Hospitals supporting. So they're 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 getting the money from the big corporate sponsors. They're still getting it. It's just corporate greed here. And and they're 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 not letting the kids get the education that I think those those parents want their kids. Those parents probably want their kids to have their sex changes changed too. So I mean <laughs> sure. I think you're talking about the sure, wrong you, thing. You I think move you're into wrong a higher so, you 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 move into a higher higher social strata. Yeah, I, I think I think you're dead wrong. I think it's just greed. And I, I love when they eat their own uh that way. That's uh well, like I uh, like Biden's uncle, huh? <laughs> you know, it, it wasn't the it, you know, the story's good that he crashed into the ocean. That's already a good story. Why do you have to embellish on it? You don't have to say that he was eaten. No, oh, no, it's not good enough. I got to make him eaten by cannibals. Bruce Wolf, Tim Slagle on the <laughs> weekly wrap. to start you on renal replacement therapy. Meaning your mom has to stay here until she receives a kidney transplant. Where do I go to donate my kidney? Birth place it says Nazareth. I'm a carpenter. Dear Lord. This man thinks he's Jesus. He is an ideal donor. Except he's obviously crazy. I sense a uh, sadness. I'm fine. I'm guessing you were close to the young man who died. How do you know about him? The good doctor. So Tim Slagle on the weekly wrap. And uh, if you were with us last week, I think, I don't know if we mentioned this at all, but I wanted to talk about the good doctor, how politically correct it is. But Tim actually among the many things, he's the Frank Caliendo of uh, ABC uh, nighttime TV. Um, you actually yeah. do a, an imitation of the good doctor. I'd like to. Well, hear it's it. not a it's it's not a stage quality impression. Sure, it's just a it's just a, an impression to make my wife turn it off every time she's watching it when I come <laughs> in. But I I am the good doctor. I need to get a kidney, and I do not want. <laughs> and that turns her off. Uh, yeah, because yeah, because she, she can hear it. It's uh, I have a baby now. <laughs> it's because and he is a good baby, just like his dad. It's such a. It, I think I don't think you'd phase my wife on that. She she'd barrel through and watch it. I mean, I've watched the show for the last seven years now, and it's. I mean, it's so politically correct. They had. It's a very good the, show. Yeah, it's wonderful. It's, all right, I, I I give up. I I'm abandoning the topic. No, so they had like this this kid who grew up uh, uh, Orthodox Jewish. All right. But he's gay and he gave up the religion and everything. But then at the end, he meets this Orthodox rabbi who somehow says, just try to get back to the religion a little bit, light the candles on Friday night. And, and he said, go ahead, you know, and, and go ahead with your marriage. Well, wait a minute. I mean, is there an Orthodox rabbi out there who would say no? This was this was an episode of The Good Doctor. Yeah, it's that... an episode. I don't know. It's spoiler alert. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, that's okay. Yeah. yeah, no, but he's just. I've never been able to watch it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but he wouldn't. He wouldn't give advice that way. I no. mean, he, he 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 wouldn't. I mean, you know, he might be nice and everything, like, but he wouldn't give advice. Okay, and then this doctor, this Orthodox Jewish doctor, gets, of course beaten and killed by anti-Semites. And of course, you know that in recent months, the incidents of anti-Semitism have indeed written, uh, risen like about like 380%. But let me guess, like the that. perpetrators had red hats. Something like that. <laughs> it was the same guys who attacked Jesse Smollett, as a matter of fact. <laughs> so, uh, and apparently that was MAGA country right there. So, of course, so it's got to be that. Sure. 
But, you know, I mean, after all, we are talking about a show that has it. Are there actually autistic doctors who could do that? I, I believe in the premise is, you know, I think I think I think most autistic doctors probably work in labs. They're probably they're probably well, they're, yeah, they but, probably you know, tend to be research doctors because they yeah, they're know, not so good with people. They yeah, don't like it. Makes them <laughs> well, they've, they've tackled <laughs> that issue and they've def- they've won it. Uh, then look, <laughs> even more crazy. So the co-president of the hospital, uh, this woman, her mother comes to visit her and her, her mother was like. She didn't believe her mother was a smart woman or a conversationalist or anything like that at all. But she learns that her mother just suppressed all that because her father was some kind of chauvinist. And her mother who then starts dating the uh, co-president's co-president, the older male doctor. And he finds her very interesting because she read Don Quixote in Spanish and she can do the New York Times uh, <laughs> Sunday, Saturday crossword puzzle blindfolded and everything. And the daughter didn't even know about that. Now, look, look, these parents are probably a little bit older than I am. And I got to tell you, there isn't one woman in America who was (laughs) married like within 10 years of me who had to suppress the fact that she could read Don Quixote in Spanish (laughs) because of her because of her (laughs) brutal husband. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, I mean uh, uh, but that's, you know, they, they just make. Yeah. How do you up. how do you know? How do you know a, a wife? No, it read Don Quixote in Spanish. <laughs> Give her a second drink. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So anyway. right up there with right up there with uh, with being a vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> so. All right. So let me uh, let me ask it while we're talking about these TV shows. Fargo. We watched the first three seasons. I st- we started the fourth. I was a little bit leery about it. You, you've watched the whole thing. It's a little I've bit watched le- every single okay. one. Okay, I was a little and bit the leery. Movie and, and the movie a couple times. Well, yeah, I, well, I saw the movie in the movie theater. And I love Francis McDormand in it. And, the, um, and uh, was Steve Buscemi in the movie, as I recall? I was, yeah. I, I, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. He played the and, funny and, looking. He played the funny looking fella. Yeah. And Billy Bob Thornton is great in the first season of this. And, you know, and then they, but the fourth season starts and you know it's set in the 1950 with this black girl who's really bright and she's you know gets paddled by her teacher for uh-huh. being too uppity whatever you know i don't need a lecture i you know i was for lbj no, in 64 I, no, I, I, I get it i get it yeah. that season that season i didn't i didn't like that about that season that yeah. they decided to they decided to go to that to, yeah. to go to that end but it was still a good season I mean, if yeah. you could, if you could get over that, it's still yeah. the writing is still the writing is still tremendous. Yeah. All right. So and, I'm uh, gonna. And then, how many seasons are there total? Do you recall? I think five. I think. Okay. So because somebody said five is a really good season, and do you need to yeah, get? That's the, to that's the one. That's the one I just. I think that's the one I just finished. It was just. Okay. It was. It was tremendous. All it right. Was, all right. Well, we're gonna plow absolute, through. It. And you, you know what, Bruce? If you're having a hard time with it, just go to the next season. I'm just worried that you need to see it because no, not at all, not at all. There's it's very. Like there's, there's, you there's have to guy. look. You have to. There, there's little Easter eggs. Like mm-hmm. I, I think in season one, there was uh, the, the that said they, they, somebody found the money that was left in the Fargo money movie. Right? Okay. Was, that, was that was that season one? <laughs> I think. Well, there's also Buscemi buried in, Buscemi buried the money. Right, the, the but, million but dollars. One guy, one guy who's the the deaf guy, and he winds up appearing, you know, in season three, and he had been in season two, and. Uh, if you yeah, yeah, there's that. little Easter eggs like that, but you got to look for them. There's yeah, well, no, there's no like, necessity to, to watch them in order. It's like one of the best things I, I, I liked reading Stephen King about 30 years ago. And I, I read the novella or whatever it was. That was the, ba- the basis for later the movie, the Shawshank Redemption, you know, and, it, and, uh, and so I read that story and you read it. And then in the next story after that, uh, Andy Dufresne, he's not even mentioned, but it's just by his clothing. He's just walking through the town <laughs> in the next story that has nothing to do with it. And it's, and it's fun stuff like that. Much as I hate Stephen King's political views. I mean, he wrote some some good stuff anyway. All right. So I'm going to I'm going to plow through on that. Um, yeah. Like I said, if you if you're having a hard time, with it, I, I still thought it was really well written. It was kind of it was kind of goofy because they kind of forced the, the whole racial 
uh, th- thing on it, but it was still still well written. Yeah. Just go to the next one. Now, Chris is saying this is our Easter egg. What is that? Because we mentioned something. <laughs> uh, oh, our Easter oh. egg. Oh, our, <laughs> our Easter egg is, in fact, Gene Hackman wearing the same <laughs> outfit. And Tim. I had to take off. Mind. I had to take off the vest because it was just getting too hot in the first segment. But is I believe it? I believe that's who, that we got the same exact shirt on. Yeah, you do. You and Gene Hackman. So and uh, uh, and uh, I'll, I'll try not to pull. The, I I got the, I even got the gray sweatpants too. So, I'll oh, tell you. I'll tell yeah. you. Well, uh, Zoom you decided know. that you didn't want to see that. So. I want to take. I want to take you in. I want to take him with the, with that shirt. I'm going to take you in. Be your representative. Have you auditioned for United Airlines voiceover thing uh, that, that Gene <laughs> did many years ago? Well, you got the shirt, and you could do it as uh, the good doctor. Uh, so, uh, fly flying United. is great, except on Boeing. <laughs> so, um, I like to fly. It is a very good plane. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, you're, are you interested at all in this Caitlin Clark phenomenon? I mean, female yeah, basketball. Absolutely, player. I, I, I actually, I actually am. I think it's. Yeah. I, I've, I've, I've never been a fan of the WNBA. I think if we, you know, if we're going to segregate, we should probably have a white MBA. So, <laughs> you know, if we're going to have uh, mediocre basketball well, I, as a professional look, sport, I hear but... I, I, I got an idea for this. We see, I think at first she's going to be swallowed by the anonymity of the WNBA and she won't be dominant uh, at first anyway. So she'll lose a lot of her luster, but eventually she could be a game changer who will need equally great competitors surrounding her. And at that point, it might not uh, be uh, wise or might it not be wise for the Arabs who created the live golf tour to underwrite a league comprising many transgenders who can play with Caitlin, give her some competition at that point. So that you know, <laughs> might transform the W. It's just the thought I'm thinking out loud there. Sure. Um, sure. Yeah. I, I, uh, will Brittany Grimes be allowed to play in that league? I just saw a wedding photo of Brittany. Did you see that Brittany? Is I it Grimes not. or Grind- Grinder? I can't remember. I don't know. Yeah, don't she's know. <laughs> no, yeah. Grind. Grinder is where she met her fiance. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I, always, I'm, I'm like Joe Biden. Let's not bomb Haifa. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I, the sky could actually play a game at the new Comiskey Park. And the White Sox could be the undercard. That's a, 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 a popular <laughs> a game against uh, the Indiana Fever, I think it is. That uh, Caitlin Clark is going to be a part of. Uh, there, there is a uh, Brittany Grinder Grimes. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, it, it's you know, I think I think she's gonna she it's gonna she's gonna do uh, she's gonna make the WNBA actually something to watch. It, it's I mean she's selling out she's selling out stadiums at the college level for women's <laughs> sports. I mean it, she's a phenom. There's it's uh, I think it's kind of cool. I'll tell you, it, you know, did you I'm hear what she's make? It. Do you hear what she's making? Like seventy five grand, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Plus, yeah. plus plus twenty million, you know, in endorsements. Well, yeah, uh, but but still seventy that's it. That first round draft pick, and that's all she gets is seventy six thousand. Yeah, right. My god, she could she could she could get a job at Facebook and make more than that. <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, we'll uh We'll be on the bandwagon. You, me, and the good doctor uh, get her uh, more money. Bruce Wolf, Tim Slagle on the weekly wrap. And that's the weekly wrap on radio and television. Follow Bruce at Bruce Wolf Shy on Twitter and Tim at TimSlagle.com. The weekly wrap with Bruce Wolf, a CP Pods production.